What's up guys, it's Coach Drew. Today I'm gonna to give you guys three great ways to become more shifty. A lot of players wanna be more shifty and they think it's a really hard process, but it's actually not. It's all about manipulating the defense and getting outside their hips. There's a couple different ways to really become more shifty. The biggest thing that I always say is if you break it down into three, you've got your hesitation, you've got your float, and you've got your shift. A hesitation just simply means changing speeds, stopping the starting, acting like you're gonna shoot. There's a ton of different varieties, but it just means basically getting the defense to react a certain way and you do the opposite. Floating just means the ball goes one way, you go one way and get outside your defender's hips. And shifting really just means going opposite of the ball. So let's break down each one. First, let's talk about the hesitation. So the hesitation is a key component and it doesn't mean just hesitating and faking a shot. It's not just a shot fake hesitation. So the different types of hesitations, one is you do have a shot fake hesitation. So if you have the ability to really kind of make your defender believe you're gonna shoot, the defender's gonna constantly be going up and down and the more we can get them to rise and drop out of their stance, the more likely it is that we're gonna be able to change speeds and get by them. Also, you have kind of a drive hezzy, which means if you go between, you have to have the ability to flinch. So I'm here, I'm flinching, I'm flinching, I'm flinching. Doing that right there also is another variation of a hesitation that is really important. So the two things out of the hesitation that we'd work on is, number one, kind of a trigger step where we're just getting our hands together, dropping, selling a shot by getting our eyes on the rim, our hips down, our hands together or a drive hesitation, which means basically we're low and then we're gonna throw our shoulders forward, eyes are going, our shoulders going to sell that we're driving and constantly just flinch right there to really sell that we're going. Hesitation is the first way. Second way is by floating. Floating just means ball goes one way, you go one way. So if I'm right here and I use a simple inside out, if I float to the right side, then my right foot goes forward and my body goes to the right outside of the defender's hips. Then if I float to the left, Again, it's the opposite. So I'm constantly just changing. It doesn't matter what handles I do between the legs, crossover, in and out. All I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get outside my defender's hips and I'm always showing a high leg so that the defender has a top leg that we can attack and read. Okay, so a float is the second way. The third way is shifting. Shifting is probably the hardest way, but what we want to do is we really want to get your defender leaning in one direction and us going in the opposite direction. Okay, and so that means if the ball is going from kind of left to right, then our body's going right to left. So ball goes one way, our body goes the other way. Ball goes one way, our body goes the other way. And this is a great way to kind of get your defender to jump in the wrong direction. Maybe you're sitting here and you're floating. You're floating, then you act like you're going and you keep going. Well, obviously your defender reacts and goes that way because they think that when you went between the legs, you're gonna take off, you get them to slide in one way, you manipulate them, and then you obviously go and shift in the opposite direction. If you're struggling with the shifting, of ball one way, body the other way. One simple way you can work on it is find a line right here and simply when you cross the ball over from right now my inside to outside, then just jab your inside foot over the line. So if I'm right here, I just cross over, jab, cross over, jab, cross over, jab. You can also go between the legs, jab. But really all you're doing is getting your body to move where the ball goes one way and your body goes another way. So if you wanna become more shifty, get good at hesitations, both shot fake hesitations and drive fake hesitations, then get really good at floating where you're getting outside the defender's hips, you're moving with the ball every single time, and then get really good at shifting, ball one way, your body the other way, so that ultimately when you go, you have the ability to keep your defender off balance and guessing so that eventually you can take advantage and explode by him. What's up guys, it's Coach Drew, and I'm gonna give you guys three unstoppable mid-range moves today. And so the big thing is, I know a lot of people when they hear mid-range, they kind of frown because of the analytic era that we're in. But if you look back at the history of the NBA and you look at the champions, a team that actually won the NBA title, and you look at their best player, most of them dominated from the mid-range or mid-post. You had Michael Jordan in the 90s, you had Akeem Olajuwon dominating from the mid-range and mid-post. Then you went to guys like Kobe Bryant and Tim Duncan and now Kawhi Leonard, all dominating from the mid-post. And while there's uh, you know, examples of Steph Curry and, and Klay Thompson who did win championships behind a three-point line, it's just as of recently, and the reason that they won those is because that was their greatest strength. And so what I believe is, while you shouldn't try to go to mid-range moves, there's gonna be times where the defense runs you off the three-point line, takes away kind of a drive downhill, and the best shot available is going to be a great uncontested mid-range shot. You don't wanna find yourself shooting high volume of them, you don't wanna find yourself shooting them early in the shot clock, and you also don't wanna find yourself shooting a ton of contested ones, but if you can get uncontested, you know, good looks, they're 
normally great shots. So let's practice them so that ultimately we make them so that those analytic people, you know, aren't on our heads about shooting them over and over again. So the first one we have is just a simple stop. And the reason it works is because we really get our defender to believe we're going downhill and we're gonna do a same foot, same hand stop. So if I'm right here, I use a go-to move where I'm in triple threat. So maybe I'm right here and I just go a reach under and I'm driving. All I do is simply stop and start on my same foot. So the ball and the same foot hit at the same time. The reason this works is so many times defenders are used to us doing kind of a typical step back where we go dribble, we take a breath, and then we take another step before we go to our side step or step back. And so what we can do is we can catch them off guard. We're sitting here, we reach under, we go and we quick stop, and then we can hop back and shoot, or you can side step and shoot right there where we get on balance. So it's a same foot, same hand stop. The biggest teaching point is sell the drive. Second biggest teaching point is ball and foot hit at the same time to really exaggerate that you're going downhill to get that defender to slide to cut you off, then create separation, get on balance and knock it down. The second one we need is a skip. I love the skip because I was a huge fan of Michael Jordan. He used to do it all the time where he was changing directions and really creating space. I always say the best way to kind of create space is get into the defender and then get away from the defender. And so right here, what he would do a lot of times is off the live dribble, he'd be floating. He would take off downhill, ball and foot would hit at the same time, and then he would double tap this foot. So the ball at the foot already hit, then he lifts up, skips, changes directions, and then manipulates that angle so that ultimately he can free himself up for a shot. So again, watch this. I act like I'm attacking downhill, skip on it, separate out, and go. You're gonna need a good pocket dribble so that you don't carry the ball. You don't wanna go here and turn the ball over. What you're gonna wanna do is go like this, let the ball rise, ball goes back, and then throw the ball out to space, get on balance, and knock it down. So a skip is the second one that we'll work on. The third and final one is one that a lot of people, when I originally started teaching it years back, used to call it travel, but it's called a bump off. And what you're gonna do is it's basically an inside out with a shuffle to create a little more extra separation than just a typical step back. So on this one right here, now we maybe do a crossover. We beat our defender, we're driving downhill. We see that help side defenders pull over. We need to create space, but a step back might not give us enough. So what we do is we do an inside out, ball and foot, opposite foot, hit at the same time, and then we just shuffle out to the side and let the ball float. The reason this is not a carry or a travel or whatever you want to call it for those social media refs out there is because I don't pick up the ball. So if you watch, if I went like this, I could continuously do that. But what I want to do is as long as my second hand doesn't touch the ball, I can float laterally. And now when I pick up the ball, I just get on my one, two, and then knock down the shot. Let's check out those three things full speed. What's up guys, it's Coach Drew. Today I'm gonna to give you guys five purposeful ball handling drills that will really help you out. So, so many times you, you jump on social media and you see a variety of different ball handling drills and you never know which ones are good, which ones are bad. Now, anytime you handle the ball, it's gonna help you, uh, but we really wanna be able to maximize the time that we're in the gym. And ultimately, if everything has purpose, it'll allow us to get more out of the time that we do spend in the gym. So I'm gonna give you guys five great ball handling drills that'll help you do that, help you tighten your handles, help you improve your pound, and ultimately help you control the ball so that no one will take it from you ever again. So the first thing we need to do is have a good pound, which means knee pounds and low pounds. Now I know this seems super simple, but I promise you some of the best players in the game struggle with this because you have to have the ability to go from high to low and from low to high. So a lot of players in games might have a good strong pound, but then if they need to split through a defense, they might struggle with the low pound or players might have their hands on a string, but if somebody really pressures them, they don't have the ability to kind of manipulate the ball. So these five drills are gonna take care of all of that. So the first one we need to do is we need to work on high, low pounds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go maybe five knee pounds and then five low pounds. Now it doesn't have to be exact, so don't think that you have to get exactly five and five, but try to make it happen where you go from high to low. So here I am, knee pounds are gonna be like this, low pounds are gonna be down here. Knee pounds are like this, low pounds are here. So it's gonna be pound, 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 pound. Pound, 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 And notice it really doesn't matter where you look. A lot of people are like, keep your chin up. What you really want to do is stay in good posture because in a game, you don't want to be leaning down like this because now you're off balance. 
but as long as your hips are dropped, your back straight, it doesn't matter if you're looking at the ball or you're looking up, you kind of want to do both because you want to have the ability to control the ball, but you also want to have the ability to read defenders. So don't be too hung up on doing this, but just make sure you're in good posture and aren't leaning forward. So first one, high to low pounds. The second one we have to have is a pocket dribble, basically having the ball back. So many times in a game we're dribbling and somebody reaches in, we have to bring the ball back without flipping the ball over and carrying. So now if you're on a line, what you're gonna do is you're gonna be dribbling over the line and every couple dribbles, every three, four dribbles, you're gonna bring the ball back and then bring it over without flipping your hand over. So you don't wanna do this right here and turn your body and kind of let your hand rest under it. You're dribbling and the ball goes back. Dribble, back, back, dribble, back, dribble, back. So again, pocket dribbles, our hand is staying over top of the ball, maybe a little bit on the side, but never on the side right here where a ref can call a carry. Working on pocket dribbles, that's a great protection dribble so that you don't get it stolen in a game. So there's our first two drills. I know they seem very basic, but I promise you they'll help you out if you have the ability to do them with both hands. It'll put you in a really good situation. Third one we need to do is have the ability to manipulate the ball over a line. Okay, whether it's north, south, or east, west, what you basically want to do is dribble the ball over the line. Now a lot of people do this but they go back and forth, but you notice the ball is hitting the line. We want the ball to go over the line each time, so we're really working on manipulating the ball, okay? Another thing I like to do is if I move over here, you'll notice that now I can go east, west, and north, south. So maybe what I'll do is I'll try to go from outside here to outside there, back and forth, and then I'll go from here to there, back and forth. So I'll go here, over top. Notice it's not doing this right here. It's going pound, over, pound, over, pound, and then I go right here where I'm manipulating it east-west right there okay so those are good drills right there just to work on the control aspect now that we've got a good pound we've got high pounds we've got low pounds we've got a protection pound we also have the ability to manipulate the ball both directions now what we have to do is we have to work on some quickness okay so the first drill that we're gonna do to work on quickness is simple we're just gonna manipulate the ball from right hand to left hand and just go as fast as we can we're gonna go crossovers then we're gonna go between the legs in both directions and then behind the back so I'll go crossovers right here, just getting comfortable with the ball switching hand to hand. You'll see a lot of bad dribblers go like this and kind of smack the ball down instead of really snap the ball from hand to hand. So we just go fast, 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 going back and forth. Then we can go between the legs, exact same thing. We go the other way, and then we go finally behind the back. If you can do those, again, you're gonna have the ability to kind of switch hands and manipulate the ball from side to side. Those are the first four. The last one is you wanna kinda of put it into practice, and so what I would recommend doing is basically just doing the exact same thing that you just did, but put it in a series where you're working on all of them. And so this last one is as crazy as it seems, we call it the spaz out drill, and what you're gonna do is for 30 seconds, you are gonna go as fast as you can, working on pound dribbles, low dribbles, changing directions, changing hands, and just really get comfortable with the ball. So many times our creativity lacks because we're putting a box in workouts, and so what we do is we just do pounds, we just do crossovers, and we lack the kind of creativity that we need. So what you do is literally for 30 seconds, I'm gonna do it here for a second, where you just spaz out and just work on a bunch of different things so you can work on handling the ball. So maybe you go high pounds, low pounds, bang, back and forth, dribble pocket, bang, back and forth, handle, 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 bang, over top, bang, going back and forth, boom, manipulating the ball. And if you do that for 30 seconds, you'll just get naturally comfortable with the ball, and that's kind of the last final step before you add a defender and work on handling pressure. Five great drills to improve your handles with purpose. What's up guys, it's Coach Drew and today we're going to talk about perimeter defense, both guarding the triple threat and live ball situations. So obviously there's a ton of content out there that works on every aspect of offense, but very rarely, uh, you know, is defensive explained and it's so much because there's so many different schemes out there and so whatever your coach teaches you is first and foremost the most important thing. What I'm going to show you guys in this video is how to be a better kind of one-on-one -on -one stopper. So there's so many different aspects of defense. You have your team defense which trumps everything and then you have that individual stop where it's just you and the other player and there's kind of you know big time spacing and you just have to get kind of that lockdown stop to help your team out. So if you're in that situation these are some of the different teaching points that you can rely on but again if your coach is teaching you to you know really force baseline or really force middle or guard a certain way that that obviously trumps whatever I'm saying because he's probably built a whole system and scheme around that. Saying that, if you've got a guy in an isolation situation and you're playing him and he's in triple threat, the first thing I like to do is take away his normal pocket. Now when I say normal, most players are more comfortable if they're a right-hand player on their left pivot foot with the ball in their left pocket. 
So they feel comfortable, if you're right here, they really feel comfortable kind of jabbing and, and really extending the jab where they can kind of sell the jab, they can shoot from here, they can you know jab, pull back and shoot. So they feel comfortable here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get up on their hip and make them play out of that pocket right there, which they're not as comfortable with. Now notice that now their shoulders aren't squared anymore. When the ball was over here, you notice now their shoulders kind of are square to the rim. They're in a shot ready position. Whereas when the ball's over there, they're not as used to it. Most players don't practice kind of shooting from their, their dominant hip if they're a right hand player from the right hip, if they're a left hand player from their left hip. So the first thing we're going to do is try to take away that normal kind of pocket for them. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure we dictate their angle. So we don't want to kind of be here where they can kind of really manipulate us and a jab allows us to go here or kind of a rip through and go here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to push them in one direction. So right now I'm taking away with my chest, I'm taking away middle drives and forcing him to the baseline, but I'm not giving him a direct drive downhill because then obviously he can not only get even with us, but get into us, which is going to be a problem for us defensively. So I'm not giving him an angle, but I'm dictating the angle that I want to give him. And I'm trying to basically channel him to a certain area, kind of the gray area, the, the short corner, if you will, in the offensive space. So now that I took away his, his normal pocket, I'm pushing him to the gray area. The next thing I need to do is know what to do with my hands. I don't want to extend my hand because then reach through fouls are going to happen. I also don't want to get to the point where I'm reaching through where he can you know, kind of sweep it up into a shot fake. I also don't want to get to the point where I'm reaching and I'm off balance because that's going to ultimately give kind of an angle for him to kind of explode by. I want to drop down my shoulders a little bit in front of my knees, active hands with my palms up. So I'm tracing the ball right here. This hand's kind of taking away the drives and sweep throughs, but I'm never having my hand extended. If I do want to kind of get a hand on the ball, I'm always going from low to high. Because if I'm lower than him, he can't sweep up and get the foul. So I can do that, but I never want to go here because then if I miss, he can quickly sweep up and get that rip through foul or a shooting foul depending on what the refs call. So a couple teaching points so far. Number one, make him play out of the uncomfortable pocket. Number two, dictate the angle. Number three is palms up right here. Number four is if you're going to swipe, always swipe up and under, never swipe you know, over and down. Now that we have that, if we do force him into a rip through and he goes this way right here, a sweep, what we want to do is we want to keep our inside hand close to our body so we ultimately have leverage. We don't want to get these reach in fouls. We also don't want to control the hip where a lot of times the refs call it the youth levels. We want to keep this hand tight so we can embrace contact and we want to keep this hand up. That way if he tries to do a step back or anything, this hand is already up. So say he goes step back right here, boom. Now we can take the bump. We can also have a contest hand that will allow us to be the second second off the floor. We never want to jump and kind of, you know, embrace kind of for a, a shot fake and get a foul. So what we want him to do is we want him to jump off the floor and then when, we sh when he shoots it, go ahead and start to shoot it. We either want to alter the shot by going vertical, straight hands, or by going right here in his vision kind of triangle and contest it. If he's right here and goes in for a finish, same thing. We try to take off that angle. We're tight here so we can take a body, and then we want to keep this hand vertical. When we take the hit, a lot of times, people will want to go like this and reach down, and that's when they get the foul. So you take this hit, bang, keep this hand high so he has to finish through our angle right there, okay? The last thing is, what happens if he beats us on a sweep through? So say he's right here, he has the ball in that pocket. He sweeps through and say he does get past this angle. So he sweeps through, he goes this way. We don't want to open up right here and give him a clear path. And we also don't want to reach in and get a foul. So if he does, all we want to do is get as flat as quickly as we can so that now we can get back in kind of a race. Again, this hand's going to be embracing. He starts going this way, high hand, and I'm trying to slide. One last thing that's super important out of the triple threat is if we get beat, we don't try to just slide, we sprint back and try to beat him to a spot. So if you do say get beat this way, we don't start sliding right here and let him blow by us. What we do is run and try to beat him to a spot. So if he's here, he beats us, we're just sprinting and trying to get high hands and what would I call hollow out, which means don't get up here because that's where you can get a foul. You try to beat him to a spot, hollow out right here, which you can also use on the live ball situation, which we'll talk about in a second, okay? Now, those are the main teaching points that we have. The biggest thing that I would say is always play with your hands back, okay? Now, hands back shouldn't throw you back. It should be hands back with your chest over your knees so that you're on balance, kind of like a boxer would be. A good boxer stance is a great stance for a defender as well. If he's dribbling with the live dribble, so say he's dribbling with his right hand, 
We want to do the exact same things and exact same principles. We don't want to be reaching and throwing ourselves off body. We want to take away the crossover. We want to dictate an angle. The only other big teaching point that we need to have is if he starts driving, what we need to do is hollow out, which means constantly almost suck back right here so that we have space so that he can't get to our body. Because if he gets in our body, then he's going to ultimately be able to get away from us and use a step back, a bump off. Or if we're right here, he can get into our body and draw a foul because a lot of times if you get hit right here, boom, then you'll end up getting that and one foul. So the concept of hollowing out on the live ball, he's dribbling, he beats us this way, we just kind of almost suck back right here, stay high hands, keep them back so we can embrace a hit, take a hit without kind of concaving in right there. And so if we keep a little bit of distance between the ball handler and us, we'll be in an advantageous position where we slow him down and ultimately let kind of everybody else kind of come over and make the play on the shot if he tries to sidestep, step back, or do something like that. So the biggest thing that you want to do is always try to stay between your man and the basket. The way you do that is dictate angles, make sure you keep a little bit of comfortable distance, don't start taking chances, just be solid. And if you do those things, I promise you, you'll be a better defender than you ever have been before. My playing level just skyrocketed. Anyone that's serious about playing basketball needs to get EGT. I would describe it as the best training program in the world. This lead guard training program, like, it creates a monster in you. You got experience it. It's just on another level. The best decision in my life was to buy the first EGT program.